We'll begin with prayer. <clears throat> Dear God in heaven, thank you so much for another evening of study, uh, conversation, interaction. I thank you for those who are en route, those who cannot come because of other commitment, and I pray that uh, a blessing for each. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight we're going to wrap up the um, the series on prayer, and <clears throat> uh, the title that I gave uh, for tonight's uh, study was uh, the the prayer God always answers, because in the past uh, several weeks we have um, studied uh, elements of prayer, uh, what is prayer. We looked at uh, how to how to pray effectively. We looked at uh, uh, things that are hindrances to our prayers. We talked about uh, things to do to uh, to reconnect or to jumpstart our prayer our prayer life. Uh, things like keeping a prayer journal, being regular in our prayer. After we looked at uh, what is prayer, we looked at prayer as communion. And on Tuesday, we looked at uh, prayer is a privilege. So tonight, uh, I wanted to encourage um, those of us who say, um, I understand that prayer is the breath of the soul. I understand the necessity of prayer. I want to, like Jesus, have uh, regular prayer, as in Mark 1:35, uh, where he gets up before dawn, goes out into a solitary place, and he prays. And we indicated that that was a regularity, not an exception. It wasn't a single event; it was a lifestyle. Um, and there are people who say. That's good, but what do you say? It's not like talking to my best friend here, because that person I can see, I uh, I feel comfortable with. Uh, our friendship has gone for years, and uh, I kind of know what that person is going to say. I, I feel at ease and comfortable. And what we've tried to to demonstrate in, in throughout the entire series is that God calls us to prayer and the reason that he does is because he desires to have communion with us. He is indeed our best friend. Supersedes any person here on earth. Any relationship that we've had, having, or will have. Jesus, God, is even closer. In order to be effective, to be pleasing to God, we must communicate with Him. So I, I thought that it would be important <clears throat> for those who are worried that they don't know what to say, that they don't know what to pray, even though we went through many of the uh, structures and recommendations for prayer we still have people who say what do I say how will how do I know that God is going to answer my prayer and so it came to me uh, <clears throat> that this was the, the opportunity to present this the prayer that God always answers it's a it's it's a brief prayer, but it's a powerful prayer because we get response. We're going to take a look at <clears throat> some examples in Scripture. By the way, all of them from the same book in the Bible, Matthew, in which Jesus answers this prayer. And, or I should say, God answers the prayer. <clears throat> And um, 
I don't know about you, but is your is your curiosity peaked? I have my curiosity been be peaked. I actually tried out the title on someone at work, and I said to them, uh, I'll tell you what I said to them. There are four stories in one book of the Bible, and it's all about a two-word prayer. Do you know what it is? And the hint is that the stories are in the book of Matthew. What could that prayer be? Two words. One prayer. Anybody? Two words, one prayer. Two words, one prayer. Any ideas? All right, let, let's begin. And uh, story number one. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to go through uh, the the the. the the, the entire story. I'm going to leave you to do some reading on your own. Uh, but, but I want to make the point of what the uh, of, of, of what of what this story is about. Okay? Yes, you're asking for a hint? Okay, first first story, Matthew, okay. chapter nine, verses twenty-seven to thirty-four. There were two blind men uh, who who were following Jesus. And they were persistent. They were crying out, the scripture says, have mercy on us, son of David. And there you've got the two word prayer, have mercy. The scripture says that Jesus asked them a question. And the question was, do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they said, yes, Lord, we believe. And then Jesus says to them, what? First, he touches their eyes. Their sight is restored. He says, it shall be done to you according to your faith. So there was an affirmative answer. There was a positive answer uh, immediately upon their prayer of have mercy. That's one. Story number two. Matthew. Chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. Matthew 15, verses 21 to 28. This is a story about the Syrophoenician woman. It's significant that uh, she's identified as such and what does she do are you reading it to yourself right now that story did you pull it up and start looking at it did you open your bible and start looking at the story what does she do this syrophoenician woman
she's following Jesus and she says what have mercy on me Lord son of David my daughter is demon possessed she had asked for help and hadn't received it and now she's in desperation calling out to Jesus for the healing of her daughter and the disciples get annoyed uh, they perhaps were amazed at first that here was a Gentile pursuing Jesus and Jesus in his response to the lady actually pays deference to it if you're reading the story he says um, my ministry I'm here for the lost sheep of Israel was he talking about Jews only or was he also talking about the lady uh, scripture is unclear but he makes that statement and the woman woman takes it how she takes it as meaning that it's not for her and what did she say because Jesus rep refers to giving it to the Jews and she says but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table significant why because uh, the Canaanites uh, particularly the Samaritans were viewed as dogs by um, by the Jews and she just accepts that but she is bound and determined to have her prayer answered are you bound and determined to have your prayer answered are you getting the picture and so <clears throat> what does Jesus do with this prayer have mercy on me son of David he says he makes a statement about her faith because her faith was great and because of her faith Jesus said your faith is great it shall be as you wish and her daughter was healed story number three we're moving right along tonight story number three is found in Matthew as I said all four are number three Matthew 17 verses 14 to 16 Matthew chapter 17 verses 14 to 16 A father comes to Jesus and falls on his knees and he says have mercy on my son because he's a lunatic and he's very ill and if you can heal him what was Jesus's response to that How did Jesus respond to if you can? Are you with me? Are you following along in that in that scripture? What was Jesus' response to if you can? Don't be shy, you can post it.
Jesus gives a response. What was it? Jesus, it's almost as though Jesus was being indignant for a minute. He says, if you can. What do you mean, if I can? What does he go on to say? All things, all things are possible. If you believe, if you believe all things are possible. What was the immediate response of that father? He said, I believe. Help my unbelief. And so Jesus immediately responds to the prayer of have mercy. A parent on his knees asking for help. The fourth and last story. Matthew chapter 20. By the way, back before I go to the fourth story, uh, there's another text that I'll give you. Uh, you, you. You know the first three Gospels are known as the Synoptic Gospels. And so this th that number three story, uh, is another shade of the story, another aspect of the story is rendered in Mark. Mark chapter 9, verses 20 to 27. So if you look at that as a companion text, it's useful. Okay? Because I may be saying some things and you say, wait a minute, I don't see that in Matthew. Then you'll see it in Mark. Mark chapter 9, verses 20 to 27. Let me give you both text again. First, it's Matthew 17, verses 14 to 16. And also Mark 9, verses 20 to 27. Tell the story of the father who had a son who was a lunatic possessed by a demon. Story number four, Matthew, chapter 20, verses 29 to 34. Matthew, chapter 20, verses 29 to 34. Two blind men, not the same two as before, because they're sighted now, right? It's a different one. <clears throat> These are two blind men, and they hear that Jesus is coming, and they long to petition him to pray, to ask for healing. The crowd that had followed Jesus was noisy and it was difficult for them to be heard. But they tried as they may to be heard. What did they say? What was their prayer? Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus is moved with compassion. He touches their eyes and immediately they can see. And so the four stories that I talked about in one chapter in one book of the Bible, Matthew, all of them the same prayer. Not long, short by any measure, two words, have mercy. And yet, that prayer is irresistible to God. And he answers, always. When we come and ask for mercy, why? What kind of God do we serve? One who is merciful. He talks about his mercy, 
about himself being long suffering and this is the example in that first story with those first two blind men they couldn't see you know the statement about the blind leading the blind this was it these guys went looking for Jesus two blind guys went looking for Jesus they couldn't see they went seeking him and when they find him they say have mercy on us they were, they were looking for healing and Jesus heals them and what does he tell them don't tell anybody so don't tell anybody what I did because Jesus was not looking for the attention that would lead to his death a shortened life and these guys went and told everybody <laughs> they were so happy listen the first face the first thing that they ever saw was Jesus the face of Jesus imagine that when we suggest that prayer ought to be the first thing that we do and the last thing that we do on a daily basis what I'm saying is the first face that you and I look at should be Jesus every morning hallelujah now, in that second, the second and third story are very interesting. Two different aspects. These first two guys, the two blind guys, they couldn't see. And so they asked Jesus to have mercy on them. That was the purpose of their prayer. Absence of sight. They could not behold. Now in that second story, the Syrophoenician woman and the third story the man with the son that, had, that was a lunatic there's something similar and common first both are parents second both of them petitioned Jesus on their knees even if you don't have children you are somebody's child and your parents spend time on their knees about you concern for our children place parents on their knees and so this mom and later on this dad come to Jesus on behalf of their children and they ask him have mercy the woman was being pushed away because of ethnicity because of her national origin that there was something precious about Jesus and what he had to offer and Jesus in this instance shows that there was no barrier this is an indicator